Hey guys, I'm Dave Curley. And I'm Toby Henshaw. And this is This Week in Church Media, a show that we are going to be exploring basically anything having to do with church media. Our basic goal here is to use the technology and tools to help fulfill the Great Commission, both within your church and without the bounds of your church. Without the bounds? Without the bounds? Without the bounds. Yeah, without the bounds. Beyond the bounds of your church. (laughs) Anyway, it's this week in church media. My name is, as I said, Dave Curley. I am a digital media producer, and I have been doing web uh, video and web production, I mean, since the late 90s. I guess I was was doing video on the web when it was postage stamp size. It looked really good because I was really good at compression and really good quality, Uh, but it was tiny. Um, and, um, I've spent the last five years as the head of production for geek beat TV with Callie Lewis and, uh, and then, uh, some of my own shows on the geeks life network that we spun off of geek beat TV. And now I am running Dave Curley media, which is my, uh, production company. And I do all kinds of video production with, uh, folks, you know, local and, and abroad. And I am launching, ChurchTrainingAcademy.com, which is a site designed to teach small and medium-sized churches to use the digital production tools and get the the great commission fulfilled. So you're going to be learning about podcasting, live streaming, uh, ebook creation, uh, social media marketing, Instagram, Flickr, all that great stuff and all that. So my uh, cohort, Toby, here is a dude who looks a lot like me, but almost as good looking. So uh, what do you do, Tobe? Uh, I've been in ministry for 20 years, been in technology since the mid 90s, installed uh, Windows 95 with all the floppy disks, like 23 of those suckers. That nice. was fun. I remember yeah. when I was working at Microsoft when we launched that. Yeah, that was fun. That was, that was fun. fun. Go take so, the training classes. Yeah, worked for Microsoft for 10 years mm-hmm. um, and now youth minister here and IT guy. Yay. Yay. And your friend. And and my friend for And your friend. Yes. That's the highlight of your life. That's it? it. That's yeah. really it. That's the pinnacle. That's the pinnacle. Huh. Yeah. Yep. Well, might as well wrap the old lips around the thirty eight now. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got dark fast. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Suicide watch. Um so just real quick, um, we're shooting this whole show out of order in case it seems a little disjointed to you uh, that are watching a replay on blab. Um, And uh, we are on blab and uh, we're doing this live. We're going to be ideally doing this every Thursday. Uh, We're still trying to make sure our schedules work and all that sort of stuff. But um, this episode is kind of our shakedown episode. We, we wanted to get started, wanted to make sure the blab was working, that audio was working, some basic things. We don't have the production music set up. We don't have uh, a show flow set up yet or anything. This is episode zero. We are getting started. And the cool thing is, is it kind of turned into a regular episode as well because we have met some really great folks in the chat room. We've got uh, the Tech Buzz. We've got Talatami. We've got uh, WPC guy who we've been having a great conversation with. Um, we have had, um, let's see, we've had Joel. We've had, uh, let's see here, Joel, 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 Joel. We've had a lot of people coming and going. Um, we had some great conversation in here. And actually, one of the guys uh, that was in here asked if he could join our little conversation. His name is Steven, and he goes by the Tech Buzz, and he's got a uh, network, which is the techbuzz.net, I believe. And uh, Stephen's going to be joining us here in just a sec. He's in church media, and uh, we just thought, why not? Let's just start talking. So let's see if we can get him on. Oh, I'm he's coming. In. Stephen. What? All right. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Dude. We see, how are you, man? Uh, get, we see a video I'm playing. Doing good. Just checking are you seven? Are you wirecasting? <clears throat> no, no, I'm on TriCaster. Oh, very good. Do you have a camera on you? I do. There he is, dude. Look at you with your fancy, your fancy opening and everything. All right. So look at all that he's got behind him going on. And then look at, look at that. All right. Different. Now you know I got hired Mm. at the church. (laughs) No kidding, man. Jeez. (laughs) To be our consultant. Holy cow. 
No, it's so, cool. I, I've, I've not seen a blab like this. That's why you guys caught my attention. Everybody's on here getting into uh, religious debates, atheism versus Christianity. And I'm like, guys, can't you put your time and effort into something a little bit more <laughs> creative or something? A little bit more. <laughs> 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 I agree. Yeah, but there's right, nothing that like there's politics. There's nothing that draws people to Jesus like yelling at them, you know? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. So, okay, so help me out. I'm I, I'm a tech guy, but I'm not much media. That's that's Dave's area. So explain to me, a lay person, what in the world is behind you? Is that all like, is that like a green? Are you, is that Dave? I don't even know what I'm talking How are you doing that? What is that? That's cool. This is, this is real. This is, Those these are, are real TVs and dude. real everything. Yeah. Real everything. This is, is this like a this home is. studio that you have? Yes. Yes. Kind of like what he was explaining. I pulled up his website for Andrew Locke and I was going to check it out a little bit later. Um, that type of yeah, stuff Andrew, interests me. I'm really interested in stuff. Andrew's like show is Andrew's show is great. Um, actually, uh, I was showing Toby. Um, I had to run up to the church. Um, Toby could not find his uh, webcam or his USB mic. So I had to come to my studio and raid boxes and run them up there. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, he, he's only like a mile and a half away, which is good. I um, feel so ashamed of myself now after seeing Steven's digs there. <laughs> you still haven't no, totally no, no. seen my, my uh, set in the garage yet, my, uh, my live set. I'm going to have to up my game. Yeah, exactly. Um, that, that's, what I, that's what I usually do come on Blab here. I, I don't do any of my shows on Blab. I syndicate them to Blab, but mainly I come on here. Besides you guys, you guys know what you're doing. I come on here to try to, you know, help these people that call themselves professionals that are that are podcasting from their bed, mm -hmm. and um, I, that's what, that's what I try to do. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's, my big my biggest question for Dave today was shirt on or shirt off. You know, yeah. <laughs> pants or no pants, right? Pants, yeah. pants or no pants. Well, nobody sees you from the waist down, so you can yeah. do it. Yeah, I was uh, I was uh, I was watching. Uh, See, Sean Hannity came and did an event here um, a, a while back, and I, I went and watched live. And, you know, he's sitting there, you know, wearing a, a nice jacket and a white shirt and a pretty tie and all this. And then, like, yeah. during a break or something, he got up and he's had on jeans and ropers, you know. And, uh, and then I saw um, somebody else, one of the, one of the local guys, um, you know, from a – an outtake or something from one of their shows or whatever. He got up in the middle of a thing and he had on like some jams and all this, but you know, with a, with a double breasted suit on top, you know, love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. Well, that's what I was going to tell you. You were saying you, you have a TriCaster there and you have a TriCaster 8,000. I don't know if it's out in your garage studio, but you can bring all that stuff in the lab because you were talking about the, like the cheesy radio sound effects, but I'm bringing the TriCaster in the lab. I'm just, feeding it into Wirecast and then using Wirecast virtual camera mm -hmm. to go into Blab. And then I'm just shrinking it down inside of the 4.3. So I got a 16.9 picture because, you know, with the TriCaster, you know how you can zoom in. And right. certain people right. ask different questions about different pieces of software. I can, with the TriCaster, that gives me a little bit better angle to go in and I can v I can zoom in on, you know, certain websites right. and things like that. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm in the, I'm, I'm in a slight transition stage. I've, I've had this uh, TriCaster 8000 for a while when I was, um, when I was with uh, GeekBeat um, and we, we, anybody who's been following us knows that um, Callie and, and her uh, partner, John um, decided to, split the company and go different uh, different directions. And so we took we each took a TriCaster and, and got our own studio set up and all that. And then when she moved to Portland, I hung on to the 8,000 right here. So it's on loan and it's going to end up going back to her uh, just because it's in a big, huge rolling video cabinet. But my 350, I'm going to set right. up and get that set up with a couple of cameras and with uh, an input uh, for a uh, one of my PCs out there so I can do exactly this. I want to be able to have Toby come over and we can do, you know, side by side at the table, but then we can Skype other people in and then we can also um, use the, um, uh, the TriCaster can be, can be a receiver for uh, an airplay um, yeah. source. So we can show off apps and all that sort of stuff straight from our iPads. Well, the rumor is that Blab is going to go to 16.9 and they're going to have uh, – this was a setup that Furcon, the, C, the CEO, he kind of – or CTO, excuse me, 
he shared with us that this is potentially going to be the new layout of the lab where you'd have you know your 16 9 window at the top and then you'd have all your co-hosts That's down here and then i guess the users could click on who they want to have in that that full box right so if you were doing an organized show like if you guys were in the same room and you were using the tricaster to produce it you could lock all the seats until you want guests and then just have that 16 9 window there perfect to produce your show and i think that that's really fantastic. cool yeah that's great that is great so hopefully hopefully it comes sooner than later that's i'm that's what i keep crossing my fingers like come on guys release it yeah now <laughs> yesterday <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I'll tell you, um, we were, I was looking at platforms and, um, you know, I've been doing this for years and years and it's always, you know, like you, where we do everything, you either live stream it to Ustream or, or YouTube, um, you know, and then take the recording and trim it and you know put it out as a podcast and all I've been doing all that. When Blab came along, I decided to, um, to basically use it as an object lesson. Um, because as I'm teaching the, small and medium sized churches, how to do all this sort of stuff. I want to teach them how easy it is to get started. In so that the barrier of entry is really low for them to get started because that is the, by and large, no matter who I'm coaching, no matter who I'm talking to, it is always, I have these ideas, but you get locked into the, perf- the, the perfection. You, you sacrifice progress for the sake, sake of perfection and it hampers you. And then six months go by and you haven't launched your show. And all you need to do is t- right. turn on your freaking camera and go live on Blab. Get started. And I think I think for me, that's what separates me a lot like from guys like Leo and even in the church. Mm-hmm. I, I've trained my volunteers with the TriCaster to run an intro, go right into the service, come out of the service with an outro, and stop the recording. Right. I mean, with all the camera switching and everything. And we just upload it. We don't do any post-production, even for my own show. I run an intro, my sponsor reel, come right into the show. Halfway through the show, I take my commercial breaks, come out of that, come back to the content, run an outro, done. I take the file and upload it. I do no post-production, and I'm I'm doing everything. I'm switching everything. I'm hosting everything. Um, I've got a few Skype TX machines in here where I bring my guests in on Skype. And so I, I am not a post-production type of a guy i want it one stop shop and i try to show people one person can do a whole production if, right. if that's if awesome you put your mind to it right yeah exactly so we, we train our volunteers like that that's good that is really good that's, that's crazy um, yeah um i have i've always done kind of a hybrid of that because when when we're doing live production you're doing you're you are you are capturing a live production in progress so it makes it makes complete sense that you can very easily and quickly do that. When I was doing entertainment geeks, we would do them a segment at a time. And, uh, right. When that segment is over, we would, uh, you know, we would check the clock. Hey, we need to let's just bypass this. Let's go to the next thing, or let's just mention this movie and let's move on to the next deal. And then we would basically, you know, come back from uh, from our break. And uh, so when I when that show was over, I would then take the fifty gig file and go trim it up and then start making the different uh, mp4 files for the various uh, services uh, that we would send to and um, that also helped keep file sizes down because when you're recording with the uh, tricaster you know you can record um, the you know the the 422 uh, prores version you can do h.264 and all that and those h.264 files are fantastic but they are large and so you end up yeah. with a gig, a gig and a half, two gigs. You know, for a forty-five minute service, you're going to get a gig and a half to two gigs. That's really hard on somebody's iPod um, and on their data. Yeah. So I always want to get that stuff optimized and compressed so that there's a five hundred meg file going out. You know, and then the audio file is only like right. So yeah, we we do that too. We crush it down with Handbrake. I don't mm-hmm. know if you guys are familiar with that. If you use Handbrake, oh yeah, love Handbrake. Um, love, love Handbrake. Even my shows. For the the quick time, as you were mentioning in the TriCaster, my my one hour shows come out to be about four gigs. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I'm not going to upload that. I crush that down and try to get it right around one gig if I can, for you know for 720p and try to throw it up there. Because I mean, it's still getting crushed on YouTube. Yeah. Are you are you sending what it is? Are you are you uh, sending them to iTunes as well? Yeah. um, You're sending a one gig file to iTunes. I'm sending the one gig file to iTunes, yeah. Wow. Uh, for for video and uh, and then the audio, we have the audio podcast, but 
I the reason why I do that mainly is because we're on Roku, both myself, my network, and the church. Because I got the same developer that did my Roku app and my Fire TV app to do the church's app. So we have where people can download the app on the Roku and watch the church live right. from Roku or the past five services. Same with my my shows. Sure. Um, and I've got a developer working on the Apple TV for the new Apple TV app. Wow. And so. With with that being on a television, I kind of want to keep the bit rate a little sure. higher. I know one gig file is a lot, but most of my audience now is watching via Roku or Fire TV because you don't have to download anything. Right. You just go on it just like sure. a regular channel. I mean, same with you guys. I mean, you'd probably rather do that than to go fill up your iPod with, with like right. one gig files, right? right? I mean, it just makes and then more do you sense. Just, then, then do you have just like the audio that's available for iPod so they can listen in the car and stuff like that? Yeah, and that's a smaller file. Right. That's, that's not audio is yeah i just extract the audio using QuickTime. Uh -huh. yep just drag the audio file convert it to an mp3 and send it up that's awesome you know? that's good so i guess it's minimal post-production yeah. not not anything that's well, really that's why i i'm a i live and breathe in the adobe creative cloud so um i've got all these okay. presets set up in um with media encoder so that i can dump the file in there and then send out the audio oh so it watches the folder uh, i i you can do that. I have to learn that. I prefer not to do the watch folder thing just because okay. it, it because it's gonna it's gonna end up crunching up. You know, if I if I move it over to another machine, that's great. But what that forces me to do is I can't do it straight from the timeline. I have to make a master file and then put that master file in a watch folder and then it will grab and do all the different uh, batches that I want done on it. What I do a lot is I make rendering out the master archive file as part of the render process. So I'll send the time okay. into media code encoder and then duplicate it several times. And then I will make one that is uh, the YouTube version. Then I'll make one that is the version that gets embedded on the website, which it, it may be the YouTube version, depending on what yeah. show I'm doing. Um, and then I'll make a version that is say a 480p for uh, iPod and and stream, okay. you know, on your on your different devices, something that's going to, you know, and I, you know, I, I tweak the bit rate and I do the super high, you know, multi pass and all that sort of stuff so that I can have a 1.5 uh, megabit file um, that ends up really good quality at a smaller resolution, and then you know dump out the audio and whatever else I need. So the watch folders are great, but when you do it on your production machine. What happens is if something right. is put in there, all of a sudden your CPU processes go through the roof because you copied something into there. And now you're trying to go and now you're having a hard time scrubbing and all that sort of stuff. So, no, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take a look at that. My buddy that co-hosts my broadcast now show, he uses Adobe. And he swears by it. He's like, dude, you got to get off a of handbrake. He's like, you got to use Adobe. And I, I'm like, this is one more thing for me to learn right now. You know? Yeah. It's great. Um, I got to get you guys. I got to get you guys to come on that. Uh, I do a show um, about broadcasting, broadcast now, but I, I, we want to do a segment on church broadcasting, but I don't want it just to be. My co host is also involved in the church and does a lot of the sound in the media. And so him and I, we kind of talked to it from that perspective. But I think it'd be interesting from your guys' perspective, based on what you're talking about today, to talk about the challenges, especially Toby, you know, the challenges of getting. As he put it, a 150-year-old church with 150-year-old <laughs> technology up to speed in today's world, and um, you know, kind of do it that way, and and get your because you guys are going through it. I mean, we did it, we did it 10 years ago, you know. So everything's changed now. So like, how do you get how do you get people on board? Like, I had an in, you know, I was the assistant pastor, so I had an in where I said, look, this is the direction we should go. We need to get on this. And my senior pastor didn't know anything. And he saw, you know, what I was able to do in my studio. And he was just like, whatever you tell me, you get the board to approve it, we'll write the check. You know, you, you own this domain type of thing. All right. So I think it'd be interesting from that perspective. Yeah, that's, uh, I'll tell you, um, I, I haven't mentioned this yet, but that's, you know, um, Talatami there just said that he has the exact same problem. And that's that's actually why this show exists is to actually support the project that uh, God put on my heart. It's so funny. God told me a number of years ago to put together a, uh, a website to train small and medium-sized churches how to use all the digital publishing and media tools and all that sort of stuff that really large churches have been using like crazy, like Harvest. Um, 
Greg Laurie's church is, um, it's a mega church. It's a multi-campus church like Fellowship and, and Gateway and all these others. Um, and they, their whole thing is to maximize the available mediums to promote the, the, the or to, to spread the gospel. So whatever it is, you know, when, when they, when they first started putting screens up in the church and moved from a tape ministry to a CD ministry, to a DVD ministry, to a podcasting ministry, to live streaming, to apps, to all that sort of stuff, whatever it is, whatever the, the, the medium of the, of the year is, you maximize it. So right. I'm putting together church training academy.com so that, small and medium sized church or anybody, but I'm targeting small and medium sized churches so they can join up and start going through some training. Stuff like how to get started on Blab, how to, you know, right. take, take your podcast or take your your service, trim out the um the worship and stuff at the beginning and just have the Bible study, you know, and then also have the entire service. You know what I'm saying? All these different right different things. How to strip a strip a service um into two parts so that you have a radio show, 23 minutes type radio show type podcast, you know, like Pastor Jeffers does with First Baptist Dallas, you know, just all that kind of stuff that folks may want to do, don't think they can do. Um, but that, I mean, I can, I can train Toby how to do some of the stuff where he just, you know, sits down for 45 minutes on Monday and, you know, rips that his head's going to explode. No, no, but <laughs> it will. Do it. It will. <laughs> you know, I mean, Dave, you made a good point because a lot of these churches, even our church, you know, without me there, you know, I'm trying to train people. I said, I said, listen, you know, because everybody's like, well, I want to do this. You know, this is what I want to do, and I'm like, you should always be training your replacement. Ever since day mm-hmm. one, when I came in, I started training everybody because the problem when I stepped into that position, I'm not an, I'm not an, a sound engineer, but I know enough about audio because I wired it here in my studio. Our sound guy left. And he was the only one that knew how everything was wired. Right. And that was about the time you guys saw the video where we moved the sound booth above the sanctuary there. And I ripped everything out and, and started from the ground up because we had ground loop pumps. We had all this nonsense. And I'm like, look. If I'm going to be here, I'm going to wire it up and I'm going to show people how I'm wiring it up. So in the event I'm not there, they know what to check and see how things I don't right. like this whole secrecy thing within the church, you know, like job security, whatever you want to call it. So I'm constantly training people to the, and I've got them to the point now. My other job, my day job, um, the software company I work for, I have to travel to California four times a year, sometimes more. And so I've got them to the point now, they don't even bother me when I go. Like they know it, they, they've got it down to a science, how to turn the TriCaster on, how to get the wire cast up and running, how to send stuff, the live video out to the projection screens and the, you know, in the, in the nursery and the overflow. Like they know how to do that all now, but it, it took a while. I mean, you, you have to sew into them in most churches between 100 and 150 people. They don't have the volunteers. They just right, don't. Right. They have one or two people. Right. Yep, that's 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 exactly that's exactly why churchtrainingacademy.com is being created is so that those people can learn how to do it. Start where they are. Doesn't matter where they are. Start where they are. Here's how to get started. And then here's the next step. Here's the next step. Here's the next step. Here's how to tweak. Here's how to refine. Um, you know, and then put together production checklists and all that sort of stuff. Te- teach them how to annotate their process so that it's in there available new person coming in you know you can take a 15 year old and say you know here's this little booklet here's a little pdf here's something that can walk you through here's three videos to show you how our system is set up and things to consider if this goes wrong look here here and here if this goes wrong look here 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 so you can you know reasonably you can walk away and if somebody comes in dry they need 30 minutes and they go, okay, I need to go check this, you know? Right. Right. So Stephen, on your, on your, uh, in your church on Sundays, whenever you guys are having your service, how many people does it take for you guys? How many people are in the booth? Do you have people on cameras? How many people are y'all, do you use on a Sunday? We, we can use, like we have uh, four cameras that are manned. Wow. And we usually use like youth kids and different different folks like that because they always want to be involved in it. And sure. Yeah, honestly, most of them are so fidgety. It's nice to put them on a camera because they can constantly <laughs> be moving and panning. And, and a lot of times they do better than most adults. Um, and then what I do is most of these kids, they've got their cell phone, right? So we set right. up a, a group Skype and I have them mute their microphone. 
and they keep that in their pocket with a little headset. And then us in the control booth, we can communicate to them. Oh, the that's service. brilliant. On Wi-Fi. And then um, we're able to communicate to them. We tried the walkie-talkie thing, but what happens is you get the squelch sometimes because mm-hmm. they'll rub up against something right. and it turns the squelch up. Yep. So we found Skype to be the the, the most – because everybody's got a cell phone nowadays, so it just makes yeah. it easier. And if somebody doesn't, I let them use my cell phone. It's, it's not a big deal. And then we can actually have it on – a computer there and we can mute the audio and, and so so the service isn't really hearing it we could say okay camera one john hey you need to pan a little bit more here or you know that lady's getting sick and tired of you being zoomed in on her let's look at the camera <laughs> uh, sometimes they they start drifting but we have those and then we have a, a woman that kind of runs the soundboard slash pro presenter which is uh, i'm sure you guys are familiar with pro that's presenter. what we use yeah okay and then we have in the video booth, the video room where they dedicated it, we have uh, two people running the TriCaster slash Wirecast okay. because there's some features on Wirecast that they can do that you can't do on the TriCaster yet. So, like what? It's, it's, so we can, uh, well, for one, you have the Wirecast cam where it turns your iPhone or iPad into a camera. Cool. And you can just wirelessly transmit it to Wirecast. There's a built-in social media that's a lot easier to use than the one on the TriCaster. Right. It's just a matter of logging into your, your Twitter, and you can get it up on the lower third and, and, and police any tweets that you want up. Good. Just different things like that. I mean, they're, they're minor. Um, and then there's things, obviously, the TriCaster can do that, that Wirecast can't do. Right. And so we, we try to utilize the best of both worlds. So the guy that's usually running the Wirecast machine He's also usually answering the chat room. We, we do have a, like a live chat room where people can come in and he'll monitor the streams. Then sometimes we have a girl, depending on depending if we have a lot of people that day where, where we have a lot of volunteers. I have her using a CG program. It's called Gen CG, which uses a net input on the TriCaster. And she can make real-time lower thirds and graphics and send them over to the TriCaster in the net input. And she likes to do that. She's she's kind of like a designer. She didn't know the software, but she knows how to design. Mm-hmm. So once I showed her how to use the software, she's just I, I just let her go creatively. She'll sit there in front of the laptop and make so, really so, neat lower thirds. So isn't there? I could swear there was a live type uh, that can be run from a um, from a PC. Um, that's something that New Tech Live can, Text for New Tech. Yeah, yeah. yeah. New Text isn't that great compared to like Gen CG or right. even New Blue Effects is coming out with one. This is Gen C Compix. Yeah, from Compix. I have live text here from New Tech. Yeah. And I just I don't th- my personal opinion, I don't think it's that user friendly. For me, I, I can use it, but but Compix seems a little bit easier for most people. Yeah. Because you can like drag and skew things. That's just just my personal opinion. That you know, you might think live text is better, and that's cool. Well, see, I use live text, you know, for uh, I I don't I don't use it as a live uh, as a live feed, I use it as a, um, you know, I get I get my guests lined up and all that sort of stuff and whatever we want to promote and have them all sitting in the bin ready to be brought up. Okay. Um, right, right. But you That's know, usually not, how I do it. Yeah. And but what you're talking about is she's using Gen CG coming in as a as a net input on one of your one of your two net channels. So right. She, so she's basically just feeding you bring that up and then it's it's almost like on Fox News where, you know, you're sitting here talking and you say, you know, we use uh, we use Gen CG. And then it says, you know, Stephen Haywood, colon, we use Gen CG, you know, shows up within a few seconds of you saying it. So she right stuff up. if he starts going around the map and saying, hey, um, right. you know, go ahead and, and, and go to Psalm 32, five. You know, she can type Psalm 32, five. Boop, it just shows up. Right. And the other thing she can also put in, like if he puts out a question to people. Right. Um you know, he wants them to think about it. She'll put it up on a lower third and, and gradually as we switch to the video that's up on the screens, mm-hmm. she'll throw it up there. So that way, you know, it, it, it re regurgitates in people's minds like this was the question he asked about five minutes ago for you yeah. to think about. Right. And so it, that's where it kind of we don't do it all the time. And then we have a mobile camera when we do different um, events. And sometimes, like I said, when we have a lot of volunteers. If my wife or myself are preaching that week, the senior pastor likes to walk around and use the Teradek cube on oh, one of the cameras and do yeah. it be like a roaming camera. Love that. He likes to do over the shoulder shots when somebody's got their Bible open. It kind of looks cool when you're doing a picture in picture. So yeah. um, it really depends, honestly. But uh, most of the time we have about six a, people. You're doing this with a church that averages 150? Yeah. 
That's a that is a small church. That's the size of my parents' church, which is about a hundred small church. It, it is, a, and we're in the middle of nowhere. We're like Western PA, where love it. It's like Amish country, yeah. so everybody's technically challenged. <laughs> and I'm not being mean. They'll tell you that. Sure. So it's, but we always grab the people that they don't know where they fit. Because my wife is a worship leader. She plays keys, and I play drums. And so we wear a lot of hats in the church because it's a small church. And so I'm trying to delegate a lot more responsibility as I'm training people. And I find the people that aren't musically talented, they're not really speaking folks. And so they just want to be involved and they don't know where they fit. They don't like to talk to people. You know, they're not that type of person. So we found that some of them are excellent camera operators and they love doing it. Absolutely. That's kind of how we get them. And that's kind of how we get them involved, you know. That's fantastic. That's, that's, that is great, man. What, uh, yes. hey, you're muted. Come on, oh, it's this, it's this microphone you gave me. <laughs> what, what was that? What was that? Thing? We weren't ignoring you. We weren't ignoring you. I thought he was trying to say something, but Darn I wasn't it. sure if he was talking to somebody I got to quit crossing my arms because I'm hitting the mute button. So do you guys use the same cameras across the, across the board or do you have a mix and match set of cameras? No, we, we used to, when we first started, we, and, and I'm sure Dave will really appreciate this. We used to, we first started when it was standard def, my, my senior pastor had a Sony PD 170 standard definition firewire camera. Yeah. I had a Canon Vixia or I, excuse me, I had a, Canon GL, what was it? GL20 or GL10? GL2. I've got a GL. Uh, GL was it GL2? Okay. okay. I've, I've got one. So I had one of those, and then I ended up getting a Sony PD170. I found it at a flea market, believe it or not. I got it for like 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we had. That's what I had. Um, so we used to, I used to bring my cameras every week because I used them in the studio here, and I used them there, and the church didn't really have a budget at the time. So what we did was, and, and we didn't have the budget for TriCaster, So we bought Wirecast and I ran it on a MacBook Pro and then the pastor had a MacBook Pro. His son had a MacBook Pro. So we hooked two of the cameras up to those computers that were basically crowd cameras via Firewire and then used Desktop Presenter, which is works over the network to grab the video feed from photo booth within the Mac and send it wirelessly to the sound booth, which obviously is going to put like a two to three second delay on it. I love it. But they were crowd shots and we didn't care, but that's how we were able to do multi-camera. And, and then we hardwired via Firewire, the, the one Sony PD-170, which was the main camera on, on the pastor, the, the person that was speaking. And people are like, dude, how are you doing this multi-camera? And, you know, with Firewire and, and, and that's where... You know, we kind of broke into that. And then when we did the upgrade to HD at the time, the Canon Vixia HV40s were the ones I'm using here in the studio. I was using them for the longest time. That's what we bought. We bought five of those at the church because they were inexpensive, but they put out a good picture. Mm -hmm. 50 megabits coming off the firewire or close to 50. Well, we we have them hooked up via SDI. We We converted HDMI to SDI and then we're running that. And then, um, now that we have the TriCaster 40, so this was the challenge. I went from HDMI to SDI, ran it to the booth, so I didn't have the degradation and quality over a component. Right. Then converted the SDI to component and ran that into the TriCaster. Wow. And I was surprised. I mean, there's a little quality difference. I mean, but for most most people, they're not going to. I mean, Dave, you'd notice it, but I would notice it. But most people are like, man, that's awesome. That's fantastic. And just cobbling together. Because that was what within our budget was the, was right. the TriCaster forty. That's, so that's we, we had to, and that had to make it happen. And that's and that's the thing that's that that kind of ingenuity. Um, we want to encourage the crud out of that because you you made it happen. It needed to happen. You, yeah, you made it happen. You, you you cobbled it together, and that's for I don't know for the last however many years that I've been doing all this sort of stuff. I've been telling people to just get started with whatever you have. If you want to launch your own show, if you want to do something, if you're a uh, if you're a pastor and you want to do a weekly short Q&A where people just email you questions or things that people have asked you over the years, you know, you keep a little list of common questions whatever. You want to release one a week or something. Yeah. You sit there with your laptop and record these things and get them put out there. And you just need to you need to tweak, you know, Toby's using his laptop and I went and got him a, uh, a Logitech camera that I had here, took it over there. 
Um, his is up on a stand. Um, so, you know, and he uses a regular keyboard, but uh, a lot of people just have it sitting on their desk. So the first thing you want to do is like stack some books up or something, treat it like a regular camera, get it up. Yep. Little bitty tweaks that can be done with whatever you have to get started. You can still be as professional as possible um, very easily with just small, small little things. You guys were doing that. You guys had had uh, laptops and, and webcams stationed around. We used a webcam in the sound booth because it overlaid it it overshot the sanctuary yeah so we took a microphone boom arm that has the little clip yep. the clip type for the microphone and we clipped the logitech c920 and then <laughs> that's hung it awesome over to the balcony <laughs> and just long enough for that for that and we, we got a nice over the view wide angle shot right wide angle and it was it was fantastic and and it was you know just using using what with what we have now eventually we may go to an sdi tricaster down the road but right now it's not necessary the tricaster 40 is doing everything that you know they need it to do yep and um you know we're we're, we're slowly migrating because what i want to do there I, I have a huge vision for a lot of this stuff like i want to set up a green screen to where we get a missionary to come in and we could do yep. like a little 10 minute pre-service mm -hmm. interview with that missionary i could feed it right into the tricaster play it while people are coming into the sanctuary like keep it on a loop like because i mean once you've seen the announcement a hundred times you know what the right. announcement is so i want to put it in that loop to where they're talking with such and such person from zimbabwe you know about the vision that they have or whatever and then and then run that through right in production but we just um the, our, our construction guy he's, he hasn't gotten to put my lights up yet but that's coming that's why i said it's a work in progress when you look at that video <laughs> have, you, have you done green screen before i have yeah i do it um a couple of the shows i produce uh we do we do green screen like yeah, it looked like an example um by the way do you have a price on that um on that uh compix software I believe it was like five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. I forget what it is. Um, but New Blue Effects actually has one that I'm really looking at that you're going to be able to bring in. Um, so I don't know. I have to, I have to get back to you because I, I like the New Blue Effects plugin with Wirecast, and if it's anything like that, it's going to make it even simpler than than Gen CG. And it will it will so, it will integrate via a net. Um, it'll go in via net input. Yes. Good. That's cool. So. Well, but this this up. was shot in my studio here, and yeah. she was standing in front of a a green screen, and um, yeah. she does a throwing show, and so she was critiquing the the thrower. And <laughs> what I did was I had a, a real monitor, which is off camera, you can't see it. So she was sitting there um, looking at the real monitor, which made it look like she was looking at that fake monitor. And then I was rolling back and, and doing things. And then this is another thing that my wife and I were doing here in the studio um, when we were on on camera. So I mean, I have a I have a few. That's cool. Uh, over on that side of the studio, I have like a 15 foot wall that I put up a green screen, and I have a real couch and chair in front of it. And that's cool. I use it for that. Hey, yeah. what's the what's your church's uh, website? Yeah. Uh, it's Shiloh-Ministries.com. Which I, I also maintain and do the website. So I, I, like I said, <laughs> I do a lot of, hopefully eventually I can get more people um, to do this kind of stuff. But you can see. Like, a did you say there's a dash in it? Yeah. Yeah. Shiloh-Ministries.com. S-H-I-L-O-H. Yep. Is that you on the left there? Yes, sir. Nice. And that's your lovely wife? That's my wife. We're Like I said, we, we started out as youth pastors. And then um, when we resigned as that, and they said, uh, I think it's time that we to get you guys ordained and get you guys as uh, <laughs> assistant pastors. Because, I mean, that's that was the ultimate call. We knew we had a call in our lives to do that. And right. so, like I said, we wear, we wear many hats. Uh, but I'm trying to migrate, you know, I, I, I'm trying to do more preaching because I, I love to do that. But I got to get people trained, right? I can't be behind the pulpit and still right. be doing right. all the tech stuff. So I'm trying to worry. teach people. Yeah. yeah, by the way, let me let me tell everybody, um, if you're just joining us, this is uh, This Week in Church Media. This is actually episode zero. It's the shakedown episode where we're just 
getting started and trying to figure it out. And uh, we've uh, we've come across Stephen Haywood here from Shiloh Ministries, uh, Shiloh-Ministries.com, and he is a um, digital media producer like myself. I'm Dave Curley, and and my cohort here is. Uh, Pastor Toby Henshaw, he's the youth pastor at our church, Two Springs uh, Baptist Church here in Arlington, Texas. And um, we've got about 30 or so people here in the chat room um, joining us. And if you guys have any questions, you can, uh, I want your questions to uh, to show up because I'm checking the chat room um, and I see little questions coming by, but sometimes they go by fast enough and I, I miss them. Um, if you would do a slash Q and then just put a space uh, and ask your question. It will get highlighted, and I can uh, I'll, I'll be able to to see it. Um, Stephen, doesn't your sound suffer by being above the sanctuary? That's what um, that's what uh, Tommy wants to know. Yeah. So what we do is we're in the process right now because we have to walk up and down the walk up and down the stairs mm-hmm. uh, to make adjustments and stuff. And he's absolutely right. What we're we're looking to do is I use a Personas mixer here in my studio, which can be controlled by an iPad. Right. And we want to be able to control it because we don't really have a sound guy. Um, the lady in the booth pretty much does what we tell her to do because she's not a sound woman either. Uh, most of the time we set it, forget it. Can can I can you hang on for two seconds? Can you push, sure. push pause there? I'm hitting some feedback. Toby, are you using your internal speakers or the speakers of your uh, uh, headset? Headset. Hmm. What about you? I to them back through your Yeti. Uh, I have a mix minus setup, and I'm using a dynamic mic, so. Uh, I'm using uh, I'm using an uh, earphone. Well, yeah. if you if you mute me on the on the um, on your side uh-huh. and then talk, see if you still hear the echo. Test test. Yeah. All right, hang. Let me mute Toby. Test test. Yeah, it's totally Toby. It's always me. Yeah. <laughs> it's always me. So he, he may be thinking he's using or or maybe he has a speaker turned up on his computer, even though he's using a headset and it's feeding back through his microphone. That could possibly be it. Uh, these. these he, oh, here, here we go. Is that better? Chest test. test. Oh, it's gone. Uh, my uh, bad. Yeah, it's better. OK, cool. Yeah, better. better. <laughs> if you I was using the wrong mic. <laughs> this, this is a shakedown, folks. I'm sorry. So go ahead, Stephen. No, 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 no worries. So what we want to do is we want to upgrade to the Personas so we can go down with an iPad yeah. and have an iPad on stage and an iPad that when they're setting the sound, they can stand right in the sanctuary um, with a dB meter and actually make sure that they're not going over a certain decibel right. to where it's muddying up. Because when you're in a smaller building, I know people cringe, sound guys cringe, like, oh, no, you're getting a decibel meter out. Does that make people complain? No. But when you're in a small building... And you're trying to pump a lot of sound when you have a full band and a full right. acoustic drum set. I mean, we even cage the drums in. Because, and I love it because I can wear earbuds and everything's mic'd and I can hear the drums mic'd. Um, you don't want to muddy the sound. Loud isn't yep. always yep. the best. You want it loud, but you want it clear. You want clarity. You want to hear the vocals. So we do We do tend to sometimes pull out the decibel meter if somebody's saying, well, we can't hear the vocals clear. Then we know it's either the person or if it's the setting, because as long as it's right where we originally set it and we were all in agreement that, like, hey, it's clear, it sounds great. We got 20 people that said, yeah, everything's clear. We just kind of say, okay, we'll, we'll work on it. We tell the congregant, okay, okay, we'll work on it. And it's just they're hearing that week. They might be clogged up or something, but we, we want to be able to do that. But we just haven't, um, we haven't gotten to that point yet where we have the funding to do it. It's just, it's, it's a massive overhaul for what, we, what we'd have to do right. to set up. So, but yes, to answer his question. Hello, Mike McDonald and McDonald and oh, the Lucifer joined. Hi. (laughs) How you doing? I didn't bring him. Yeah. (laughs) I I told you guys I'd bring one or two people. I didn't bring him. I promise you I didn't bring him. (laughs) Aeon, this is Aeon Lion. Aeon Lion, how are you? Oh, thank you. Uh, That's awesome. He just said he he just said he loved us. Thanks. I don't know who you are, but I'm following you now because you love us. Yeah. So, so tell me, Aeon Lion, who who are you? What do you do? And and welcome to the the uh, inaugural ish episode of this week in church media. <clears throat> so, Stephen, we have the same issue. We. Um, 
we have a small building that is, is our youth building. And mm-hmm. so we have our drums caged in as well. And uh, it's, it's, what do you guys, do you guys use avioms or anything for the in-ear on the stage? What do you guys do? Do y'all use wedges? What do you use? So I'm, I'm, I'm turning into a sound file because there's a gentleman that you'll see perusing around on Blab named Mike Phillips. He's been in the industry almost 50 years. His parents owned a radio station. I trust this man with my sound like I would trust somebody with my life. <laughs> okay. um, he knows his stuff. So if you ever see him, you definitely want to pick his brain. So his name um, is Mike Phillips? He, Mike Phillips. Um, he comes in. He's, a, he's an older gentleman, but boy, boy, does he know his stuff. And I become a stickler for, for audio when it, when it comes to that. Right. Where in the church, what I do is I feed an auxiliary send to uh, my, sound, my, my booth, my drum booth. And then I have a little six-channel Samson in there. Mm-hmm. That I also take subgroups from the from the snake and run it in there, so I can control my own mix. I don't right. want them messing with my mix up in the booth. Right. And I will, and I also control the monitor mix on the stage. So if they say, "Hey, we need a little bit more guitar, a little less guitar," and there, I can I can change it from my mixer to that because what we hear on stage is different, obviously, than what the sound person is right. hearing. And my senior pastor also plays acoustic guitar on the worship team, so. We pretty much, once we get it set, or, or if there's a certain song where he's playing a, a offbeat ditty on the guitar, we kind of need to hear that a little bit more. So we're, especially me as a drummer, I got to turn that up a little bit. I can't be going up to that person and, and trusting that they're going to change the right thing at the right time because they don't know the song and they're not looking for what I'm looking for. And, and the same way with him, like I know what he's looking for on certain things. As a musician, you kind of know that. And so if he tells me to adjust this or adjust that, I can do it. And, that's the way I kind of do it. And then I use, um, which the same thing that I use here in my studio, I have these shore in earbuds. They're the five thirty fives. They are. Expensive. Yeah. We use those. They're great though. They're fantastic for, for sound. And, and so I use them in the drum in the drum booth as well as, as here in my studio for, for doing, uh, when I do the broadcasts and then the other people just use wedges. They like the wedges. They don't like the, they don't like the earbuds. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the wedges, we ended up getting rid of the wedges because they they muddy the sound in a small room like crazy. Yeah, that makes why we me have nuts. Sound problems like that. Yeah, exactly I have right. To keep them way down. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So hopefully, I can get them turned over to um, in ear monitors, but it's it, it's hard. Like my wife always says, I feel like I'm leading um, with my fingers in my ears. You know, <laughs> right. like, I'm, I'm totally closed out. She likes the room noise, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's different. Hard, hard to argue with your wife, right? <laughs> right. It's a no-win uh, proposition right there. <laughs> yeah. Especially a redhead. Especially a redhead, yes. Yes. The field of wrath. But, <laughs> but um, you know, we're making strides. We're trying, to, we're trying to do that a little bit more, you know, to, to change that up. And then we just we just recently, about a year and a half ago, we caged in the drums. We had, a, we had one of those plexiglass shields, but then we mm-hmm. had our contractor that goes to our church he built a wooden frame for it that we could stick the plexiglass on. And then he covered the top in a foam. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a, I don't know, a two inch thick foam. And then um, he put a little hole in the top. So some of the sound can come out. So it's not like a, a sonic boom room. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I like it because it, I can, like I said, with the microphones, I can hear the drums. I can kind of feed that into my headset. So I know, how hard to play on certain things on a build and, and without overdoing it. And I know a lot of drummers don't like that, but I love having them caged and mic'd. That's, That's just cool. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it's a challenge. People it, don't realize it. Yeah, it really is. There's so much that, that goes into doing it. And that's, um, you know, and it's, it's different. It, it, you know, big sanctuary, small sanctuary, you know, large band, small band, all that sort of stuff. So, well, I'll tell you this. Uh, this has been uh, extremely cool. This is um, I, I'm so tickled that you uh, found us and uh, and joined in. This is uh, I think this is the start of a of a nice little friendship here. Yeah. Well, I want to give you guys one suggestion though, so I don't Please. miss this next time. Please schedule a blab if you guys are going to do this weekly. Yeah. Schedule it because I guarantee you. I think everybody here in the chat room would agree you'll get a lot more turnout if you schedule the blab for a certain time, yeah. especially now that I'm following you guys, I'll see that you scheduled it. Yes. And I don't even have to be in the hot seat. I'll just come into the chat room and kind of add, you know, commentary or ask questions based on your subject. 
Fantastic. Uh, yeah, you know, I did. I did schedule it. I started at two minutes. Uh, two minutes. Ago. <laughs> but I did. There were, already, there were already a couple of people sitting in the chat room. Um, yeah, I did. I did schedule. It wasn't really it. Well. Yeah, yeah, I did schedule it, and um, I started it, and then I had to stop for a second. Then I reopened it because I had to tweak. Uh, my uh, it, it defaulted to um, to my Logitech uh, C920 here um, that I actually needed to be running it through eyeglasses so I could actually tweak the uh, tweak the setting. So I had gotcha. to make that change and all that. So, yeah, we had a couple of uh, false starts here. But, yeah, we're, we're definitely uh, scheduling them. Yeah, I think you got a fan with Tommy. Tommy's saying the same thing. Please do this again. It's cool. We do a pre-show to get everything working right. Yes, we do, Tommy. <laughs> yeah. We do. And, and what we're going to do is... And we need a pre-show to the pre-show is the problem. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and as we as we go, this will this will formalize a little bit more. Um, we're going to do uh, a pre-show where we're, you know, kind of, you know, getting settled and, you know, touching base and, and making sure that things are tweaked. If we have guests, we're going to make sure, you know, that they're getting things tweaked. So Blab is going to be the um, it's going to be kind of the, the raw feed and all that. And I'm then going to take it and trim out the audio and trim out the video and be putting up this podcast as well. So that you will guys, if you do miss us, um, in here, you will still get the, you know, the full meat of the thing. But if you join us live, you'll get to see the warts and all and mm. uh, false starts and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's a good, no, I, think, I think it's good. I, th- I think this is definitely something I would tune in for. Like I said, I was just kind of coming on just to chit chat since you weren't doing a an organized show, um, just to kind of test the waters, like you were saying. Uh, so I, I think it'd be ideal because then I'll I'll promote it out to my folks, you know, that I know that are that are in you know the church world, and because there's different pastors that I speak with even here in Western PA, from Erie all the way to Pittsburgh, and you know my my time is limited too, just like I, I know you guys are, and if they have a, a means where they can come and learn, you know some of the tough challenges that are out there with video production. I mean, most people just think, Oh, just buy the gear and I'm off and running. They don't know what it all entails. Like, okay, now what do I do? Right. You know? Exactly. Cool. So, Fantastic. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah. And spread the word. Um, and uh, I'm still, I'm still in the building stage of church training Uh but you guys can go there and uh, join the mailing list. I've got a temporary one set up right now. Uh, I'll be setting up the full mailing list and, and start, um, you know, start sending out, um, you know, little things, you know, once a week or something as I'm building up the site. And I want to get to know the audience. Um, I want to know what folks are uh, challenged with out there so I can make sure that we get training and things put together to help uh, everybody yeah. get, uh, get over their hurdles and, and become as effective in um, you know, fulfilling the Great Commission through all this wonderful digital media. So, right. Stephen, well, it, looks like you guys- you've got, it looks like you've got a couple of you're on Tuesdays and Mondays, Mondays at six and Tuesdays at six. Yes. Uh, Monday I do uh, a tech show where I have all the folks. Um, well, anybody can really come on. I have the uh, two co-hosts that do it. We just talk about anything with technology from cell phones to computers and starting um, February. Uh, I don't know if you guys know Scott Wilkinson, but he's a good buddy of mine from uh, I, he's on Twitter a lot. Yeah, he's going to be doing home theater uh, monthly with me, where he's going to come on and talk about home theater, where 4K stands, and all the stuff where he really specializes in. Um, I got him to commit yesterday to it. He's been wanting to do it for a while. Our schedules just conflicted a lot, so I said, "Well, let's just do it monthly. Let's see how that works." Well, we'll in place of weekly roundup, it'll still be weekly roundup, but we'll do it. We'll, we'll title it Home Theater Monday. So he's going to be joining starting February 15th. So that should be a, a real fun show. And um, then Tuesdays, we do our broadcast now show where we, myself and my co host, we like one of the episodes we showed the parts of a mixing board and we go into oh, all yeah. the hardware and um, we talk to different people in the industry. We've had different companies on. We've had New Tech on. We've had Telestream. We've had AJA. We've had all these different folks on, you know, to, to learn about their products and. And even, you know, show how to do some of the stuff in broadcasting. So that's what we, we kind of focus on on those shows. Fantastic. And that's that's all at the Tech Buzz. Is that what it is? The techbuzz.net. Yeah, you guys can check that out there. All the links and stuff for Roku and everything like that. But I'll definitely be checking you guys out. And I'll, I'll head out here so you guys can close up shop here and, and uh, go about your days. But I appreciate you guys letting me on and. Hey, hey, we appreciate you, Stephen. Thanks for popping in. This is uh, this has been a great episode. It's exciting. 
Yeah. Okay. So I have to do my, I, I do a traditional outro to go out of out of the blab, and I know Tommy's going to yell at me if I don't do it. So I'm going to do it for Tommy. <laughs> I, it's all yours. Nice. And he's out. I want to be that guy. Yeah. He's a. Uh, He's uh he's loaded there. He knows what he's doing, doesn't he? <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. That is great. Uh, um, that's awesome. Boy, what a what a what a cool deal. This uh you know, you and I were talking last night and this morning, kind of going, Okay, look, this is gonna be rubbing two sticks together and that's and, right. And uh well, you know, God provided a fantastic guest. How about that? Right. All right. So um Toby, let's share a quick tip real quick. Uh you were talking about something last night that you started oh. with. <laughs> So this is just, this is just me, man. I'm like, my youth make fun of me because I, I probably have a hundred plus apps on my phone. I just, I'm an appaholic and it's not good. But one that I found this past week that I wanted to pass on is there's a, an app called Adobe voice. Don't know if you guys have heard of about Adobe voice. Now this is, this it, is Adobe, the, uh, the creative. Suite. I don't know that. Yeah. It's, well, so this is, yeah, it's the creative suite, but you can just get Adobe Voice. It's a standalone uh, for for um, uh, iOS. Yeah, I looked and, on it uh, on uh, on Android. Android. It's not there. That's one of my. Mm, things, but. Yeah, uh, but it's amazing because uh, you can go into Adobe Voice and uh, it just has a little plus that you hit at the bottom, and it asks you what you want to do. So you can promote an idea. You can tell what's happening. Uh, tell a hero's journey where you're telling this, you know, you're telling the story about how somebody overcame a problem, uh, show and tell personal growth. It gives you all these different categories. I know that the camera's not really gives you all the different categories. Um, and so like this past week, I was just, I was just playing with it. And so we've got an event coming up. Um, is that disciple now? Yes. Yes. Is something what you're calling disciple it. Now. Do I? You're calling it Carpe Diem? Seize the Carp or something? No, no. Oh. Missio Day. His Day. mission, our mission. Yes. And so there was a thing where it says um, uh, an, an invitation. And, and so I just did invitation, chose that, and it just guides you through. It literally has instructions on, on what you should do on each screen. And um, I was able to – I was just messing around, and I was able to literally within like three – Three to I don't know that's probably exaggeration. Maybe maybe ten minutes. Make a, a twenty minute little blurb that you're not you're not going to pick that up. But, well, the mic is here. Right. Okay. Anyway, it's it's amazing. It gives you those things like um, you'll see like intros or you'll. Um, some of the paid ads that you see on Facebook, just different things that are real short, 20 seconds, um, but are really, are really well done. Mm -hmm. Man, this, this walks you through how to do that. And, um, and it's, it's free. Um, so it was a great thing. And I, and so I used it, put it up on Instagram, put it up on Facebook um, and uh, had a lot of really positive comments just about it's fun. And so it's something too that I think what I'm going to do is actually give it to some of my teenagers right. and just say, "Man, go go in that room over there and, and make make something fun." Yeah. And uh, I think cool. it'll be cool. Yeah, you can you can on the fly create a a little slide presentation, a little yes. message or something like that, um, without having to jump in and, and use a lot of the heavy tools. You can you can get an idea. You can get that idea out and and get it pushed out to to whatever you need to put it on the website yeah. or email it or do whatever. And that's really cool. That's that's it's kind of an, an on the fly kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I guess if you spend some more time with it and stuff, you can really tweak it out and and do it. Uh, you can. The only thing that uh, so you can it's it's got a huge library of like um, images and icons that you can use. It's got um, you can you can put your own pictures in. From, um, from so that's really nice from your from your phone. What about video? Um, you can't do video. Okay. Um, so since it's producing a video, I guess it it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't really do that. It, I don't know if that's something they'll do at some point or not. Um, but it's cool and yeah. it's it's easy and it's got so it's got a preset template where you basically each slide it says uh, who's this for and then the next slide it will say when do, you know when does this you know, when is this happening and so it just guides you through 
each slide you record, you know, four to five seconds on each slide. And then it makes, uh, it makes a really cool little video at the end. I was impressed. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I like the uh, immediate nature of it. Yes. Um, yeah. That's uh that's extremely cool. Awesome. Well, that is our tip. Uh, Adobe voice. It's available on iOS and uh, get it and start playing with it and see what you can do and share with us. Uh, you know, the, the stuff you're doing, uh, let us know in the chat room or, or you can email us. I'm, I'm Dave at church training Academy.com and you are Toby at Tate Springs.com. Yeah. We want to see uh, what you guys are doing. And uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, any topics, anything like that, that you would like uh, addressed uh, on the show or things that you're not sure how to do um, or are wanting to do and not sure where to start or anything like that, you guys can always, always, always send us an email and we will start rolling these things into uh, our topic list uh, each week as we're doing this week in church media. So you can send an email to Dave at churchtrainingacademy.com. That's Dave, D-A-V-E, me, at churchtrainingacademy.com. Uh, and just tell me in the subject um, that you're asking a question and uh, I'll make sure that that uh, crops up to the top of my Ever expanding email, um, and um, and we'll start uh, we'll start helping you get things uh, figured out. That's uh, that's our goal here with uh, the uh, this week in church media. We uh, as we start rolling the show out, um, it's going to be a little more structured. We're going to try to keep it under an hour. Um, if we have a guest, we'll try to we'll, we'll keep it under an hour. Um, the, at least the produced one, uh, the live one. You know, we'll start early and uh, kind of get things set up and chit chat a little bit, and then we may stay a few minutes after. But um, but the actual meat of the show, we're going to try to keep it an hour, so that uh, we can uh, share a few tips, um, uh, take a few questions from the uh, from the chat room, and uh, have our guests. And then you know, beyond that, um, you know, if we don't have a guest, then we may be doing a topic uh, that we're going to be covering, and you know, he and yeah. I, it may be some how to stuff or whatever like that. So anyway, it's going to be an interesting ride as we get this whole thing figured out. And we thank you guys so much for um, being willing to go along the ride. Um, if you guys would go over to churchtrainingacademy.com and it is just a landing page right now where you can put your email address in. So put that in. Um, I am building out that website and building out the, the email um, uh, side of it and all that sort of stuff. And I want to stay in contact with you guys. And I really want to know uh, what you guys need to learn uh, what are you struggling with you know are you trying to are you trying to get your your uh, services in iTunes and not sure how to do that are you trying to live stream looking at platforms not sure what to do where to start all that sort of stuff that's what church training academy is being designed for to teach you how to get going and, and uh, move to the next level um, whether it's a the next level is just the beginning or whether it's like you know 10 levels up whatever doesn't matter that's what we're here to teach you Toby, any closing thoughts? It's good, man. It's uh, like you said a second ago. It's all just how can we how can we use technology? And we'll talk. We're going to talk about a broad range of technologies. But how can we use technology? How can we use media to better serve the kingdom? To better serve Christ? To better, um, you know, the message is pretty simple, right? The message of Jesus is pretty simple, and we just want to figure out how many ways. And we get that out and do a really good job of that. So that's what this is going to be about. That's awesome. Great. Tobe, thanks for joining me, man. Thank you, man. It was fun. Great. And we will see you, uh, if everything goes well, we'll be seeing you next week uh, with a little bit more formal episode. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.